Uh, good evening. Uh, welcome to the Delanco Township Committee uh, meeting for February 1st. Um, we've got a couple of, one, we're going to have a very short uh, required uh, Board of Health meeting that uh, we should have done in January, but uh, we're, uh, we're crossing, uh, dotting our I's, crossing our T's tonight, so that'll take just a few minutes, and then we'll uh, formally open the, uh, the regular uh, Township Committee meeting um, immediately following that. Uh, we do have an executive session planned at the conclusion of uh, the Township Committee meeting, and uh, we may take action and come back into public, uh, public session after that, so. Um, for the Delanco Township Board of Health meeting this evening, uh, February 1st, 2021. Uh, this is being held uh, remotely via Zoom video conferencing. Uh, roll call, please. Mr. Brown. Here. Mrs. Patrick. Here. Ms. Holland. Here. Mr. Olat. Here. Mr. Templeton. Here. Uh, do the flag salute. And I've got my flag here. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, United States, of, America. States of America and to and the Republic, Republic for which it stands, one nation, one nation, under God, 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 Please be advised that proper notice of this meeting has been given in compliance with the Open Public Meetings Act in the following manner. Written notice has been mailed to the Burlington County Times and Courier Post and published in the January 5th, 2021 editions. Written notice has been posted on the official bulletin board of the Township of Delanco at least 48 hours prior to the meeting. Uh, remote meeting statement. Um, the uh, meeting is held via Zoom meeting platform, the meeting ID, passcode, and other dial in. Um, uh, options are uh, posted on the agenda as well as on the website. Um, the remote public meeting statement, advanced public comments uh, will be accepted via written letter or electronic mail. All advanced comments must be received no later than six hours prior to the commencement of the public meeting start time. Um, they, may, they may be submitted to the municipal clerk's email or to the attention of the municipal clerk at 770 Coopertown Road, Delanco, New Jersey. Um, Members of the public who wish to make comments or have questions during the meeting public comment sessions may either make their comments or questions via audio option or by typing in their comment or question via the Zoom platform Oops. chat option. Um, public comments um, submitted during the chat function during the time when the meeting is officially open to the public will be read and other comments or questions submitted uh, via the chat function, other than during the time that the meeting is open to the public may or may not be read during the meeting. Members of the public who are deemed to be disruptive as defined by NJAC 5 colon 39-1 may be muted after an, initial, after an initial warning for the duration of the public comment session and or for the remainder of the remote meeting session. And the agenda is available on the Delanco Township website as noted. All right, very good. Uh, let's see, uh, for appointments, I uh, need a motion that we uh, appoint uh, Janice Lohr, Municipal Clerk, be appointed as Delanco Board of Health, Health Secretary for 2021. The motion, please. So moved. I'll second. second. By Ms. Fitzpatrick. The second was, who got that? Uh, First. Mr. Brown. Give oh. it a retired guy. Ferno Lett. <laughs> the retired guy got it? Okay. It's quick. Uh, roll call, please. Mr. Brown. Yes. Mrs. Fitzpatrick. Yes. Ms. Holland. Yes. Mr. Olette. Yes. And Mr. Templeton. Yes. Thank you. Uh, let's see a motion, please, that the Burlington County Health Dep Department of Health be appointed as the inspection agency for Delanco for 2021. Uh, motion, okay. please. I move. Second. Motion by Chris. Ms. Holland. Second, please. Brown. Mr. Second. Brown. Uh, roll call, please. Mr. Brown. Yes. Mrs. Patrick. Yes. Ms. Holland. Yes. Mr. Olat. Yes. Mr. Templeton. Yes. Uh, Mrs. Laura, any correspondence related to the Board of Health? None, Mayor. Okay. Uh, Board of Health meeting is now open to the public for comments and questions relating to the Board of Health. 
Hearing and seeing none. This uh, meeting is now closed to the public. Uh, any comments? I no. Mayor, um, Excuse I'd me? just like to report on the uh, rabies clinic we had back in November, the first Saturday in November. Uh, it went very well. It was done via a drive up um, given the COVID and uh, it actually went very, very well. It may be something, uh, a procedure we, we want to continue in the future, having a drive up rabies clinic rather than people exiting their vehicles and coming into the public works garage. Um, I don't know if Kitty or Aaron, Bev is also on, they had worked it, if they have any additional comments on the rabies clinic. No other comments? Very good, well run, thank you. I think they used that as the model for the COVID vaccines. You know, you just stay in your car and you just get hit, hit right there while you sit. Yep. All right, uh, motion please to adjourn the Board of Health meeting. So move. Still move. <laughs> I got it. Okay. We can do it all in favor, Mayor. All in favor. Aye. Aye. All right. And that concludes the annual Board of Health meeting. Now for the Township Committee meeting, February 1st, uh, 2021. A roll call, please. Mr. Brown. Here. Mrs. Ms. Fitzpatrick. Here. Ms. Holland. Here. Mr. Olette. Here. Mr. Templeton. Here. Let's see, also present, Mr. Schwab, our Township Administrator. Uh, Mr. Fox, our Township Engineer. Mr. Heinhold, our Township Solicitor. Mrs. Lore, Municipal Clerk. Mrs. Martin, Deputy Municipal Clerk. Um, Mr. Fenimore is out driving a snowplow. Uh, Chief DeSanto is here. Uh, do we have any other distinguished visitors? I don't see any. Uh, and Aaron Provenzano is our tech, tech person on the meeting. Thank you. Aaron Provenzano keeping us all connected. All right. Uh, we'll dispense with the flag salute. We don't need to do the whole sunshine statement, do we again? No, no. It, uh... Um, all the sunshine statement and the remote meeting statements um, and the remote public meeting statements are all identical. Has an identical Zoom um, passcode as uh, meeting ID and passcode. So there's no need to repeat that. All right, so moving into the regular agenda, uh, looks like first items ordinance 2021-01. Ordinance authorizing the construction of various capital improvements in and and for the township of Delanco County, Burlington, New Jersey, appropriating the total sum of $440,000, therefore, and appropriating the sum of $200,000 from the capital improvement front and $240,000 from the state of New Jersey road aid grant. This is the second reading by title only and public hearing. The uh, hearing is now open to the public for ordinance 2021-01 only. We have a comment, uh, state your name and address, um, and uh, we'll be glad to hear any questions or comments you have on this. Hearing no questions or comments from the online audience, uh, hearing is now closed to the public. A motion please on ordinance uh, 202101. Prior to the vote, Richard, can you please just explain uh, the uh, streets for, for Harry? Yeah, here, Kim. Just just to let you know, we combined the appropriation, the two hundred thousand from your budget, plus the two hundred forty thousand from state aid, in one contract uh, that uh, Harry's putting together. And if you the streets are listed on his his report. Uh, let me see if I can pick them up real quick. Uh, let's see, the township program is uh, Third Street from Cedar to Hazel, and the state aid is Second Street from Lilac to the cul de sac and River's Edge from Fenimore to Second. Thank you. Hopefully, we'll be out to bids on that within the next 30 to 45 days, get the work done late spring, early summer. Very good. I'll, Any other I'll questions move. or comments from committee on uh, this item? Uh, motion, please, then. I'll, I'll move to approve the uh, ordinance 2021-01.
Second. Second, second by uh, Ms. Holland. Uh, roll call, please. Mr. Brown. Yes. Mrs. Patrick. Yes. Ms. Holland. Yes. Mr. Olette. Yes. Mr. Templeton. Yes, thank you. Uh, public comment statement. The uh, purpose of the public comment uh, session is to allow residents to share information and or views with the Lan Lanco Township Committee. Since the committee may be hearing the information for the first time, it is not always possible to have issues and questions settled within the public comment session. Uh, report of advanced uh, remote meeting comments slash questions. Uh, this section is to acknowledge and read those comments and questions received by the municipal clerk in advance of the remote meeting, be either by electronic email, written letter, as required by NJAC 5 colon 39-1 at Sequitter. Uh, members of the public participating live in this meeting will be given the opportunity for comments and questions during the meeting in one of the, or both of the public comment sessions. Uh, the meeting is open to the public for comments and questions. Uh, session one. Again, please state your name, address, and uh, what your question or comment is, please. And Mayor, for the record, I did not receive any advance uh, comments or questions. Okay, thank you. And just a reminder that anyone um, wishing to have a, a comment or ask a question, please unmute yourself or we will not be able to hear you. All right, not hearing or seeing any uh, questions or comments from the audience. Uh, comment question session, uh, session one is now closed to the public. And for the record, Mayor, um, there were no uh, typed in questions or comments in the chat right. section. Thank you. Thanks for keeping me straight on this. I keep running past it. Uh, comments and reports. Uh, we'll start off with the uh, Township Administrator, Mr. Schwab. Thank you. Uh, first, as a reminder, next meeting, I'm going to be sending out an email to the groups that uh, ask for money from the budget that uh, once you finish the brief uh, meeting probably before by 7.30, we should be able to hear from the various uh, uh, groups that are part of the budget. As I mentioned before, it's because of COVID, the annual financials report that's done by auditor, uh, instead of being done by the end of January, won't be done till the end of February. So we will not have the revenue and uh, surplus numbers or my projection stuff for that but we will intend to have that for you for your uh february end of february workshop meeting on the budget and we'll be able to report that at the march 1st meeting for the general public um, other things just something i didn't send out as a reminder about the agenda you have on your agenda uh, change order for the west avenue recreation work we talked about uh we had received the county grant and had not used 100% of the grant. And so we added a change order to do the parking area, I think Memorial Drive, and that was completed and Harry signed off on it. You have that on your agenda. So that will spend all but $1,640 of the grant. I'm not sure whether or not we are gonna have a infield mix delivered from that, but it certainly is better than giving back the entire 16,000. So. If you recollect, we discussed that. So that's on your consent agenda. Also wanted to let you know that uh, uh, we had a, a very interesting uh, meeting at Field of Dreams this past week dealing with the event lawn that uh, we also have the next year's county open space grant for. Uh, and uh, Scott Taylor and Steve Lennon uh, explained what their plan is. If you know, we already spent money to have the area beyond the softball field, uh, the weeds killed and it did a good job on that. And so by next week, uh, they're gonna have the specs ready so we can get out to bids to have that converted into a grass area. Uh, there's no um, uh, grading or anything. It's not intended to be the per perfect field, but uh, it should be uh, a very useful area. And the toughest part is keeping people off it during 2021, it won't be able to be used until the spring of 2022. Uh, we agreed at this point in time, uh, we are not ready to deal with irrigation issues. It could be fairly expensive. Uh, we'll talk about it at the meeting capital. Uh, Harry put together some information on adding another well out there, which is needed for the soccer fields and will allow enough 
backup so that if we do need to irrigate that at some future time, we have the water supply, but uh, there are costs that uh, we would have to deal with. So we'll also get a uh, professional services proposal from uh, Taylor uh, for the work they did since January 1st, all the way through when we, it'll be a year, uh, another growing season. So it'll cover their supervision of that project until uh, the contractor is no longer responsible for it, which will be next, next spring. Um, and hopefully you will have the bids to you so that you can make an award at your March 1st meeting. And uh, so they can start work by April 1st, which is we'll be able to make sure that uh, it's seeded for the prime growing season. Uh, the other things that uh, went on uh, the pedestrian light that uh, the county was supposed to be putting on Burlington Avenue at Franklin has apparently hit a bit of a roadblock. The decorative poles were delivered, but the base plate, according to the contractor, does not match what they anticipated receiving. So they're gonna to have to replace the foundations they put in there. So that's between them and the county. So they're gonna meet out there to resolve that. But they do, we do have power at the location and they have the poles, but they obviously have to change the configuration uh, of the concrete so that the base plate properly fits on it. So that's been delayed a bit. And let's see, what else do I have? Uh, that cross the point of the budget and field. Yes, those are the four things I have for you tonight. Very good, thank you. Uh, let me jump over to uh, department heads. Uh, Chief DeSanto. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, what I'll tackle first is Enterprise Drive. There's two um, ordinances on the agenda, a reference to that. The first one is uh, based on a meeting. Uh, well, actually it was based on a concern that RLS had initially about trailers parking on our right of way of Enterprise Drive. We had a meeting on December 22nd. Uh, it, was, um, it was attended by NVR, RLS, and Misfits. And at that time, the initial agreement was to go approximately 580 feet. Uh, Mr. Fox was there. Um, subsequently, uh, there was a motor vehicle accident involving a vehicle coming out of Misfits parking, uh, parking lot and involved a NVR tr truck. So it was, uh, you know, it was a serious accident, but luckily no one was seriously hurt. Uh, the officers reported to me that, uh, you know, the, the conditions of the trailers are still in a poor position. So I went back out, called for another meeting. This time, um, Mayor Templeton was there and uh, evaluated the uh, exit. And I noticed that if we remained at the initial 580 feet, there was still opportunity for trailers to park too close to that exit and entrance to Misfits, uh, especially on our right of way. So I, I am recommending the uh, full length of our right of way to prevent any trailers from parking on our right of way and to eliminate uh, as much as possible uh, obstructions, you know, visual obstructions when coming in and out of that uh, Misfits mm -hmm. driveway. Um, also at the meeting, we talked about uh, the non right away, and we came up with a, um, you know, a, a voluntarily compliance of what I would like to see in terms of trailers being eliminated from certain portions of their private uh, road. Uh, they were in agreement and even uh, agreed to, uh, you know, put some markings, uh, paint uh, straight areas indicating no parking, and they uh, communicate among themselves who to reach out to if trailers start popping up in areas that we agreed to shouldn't be. Um, so that's the reason of the change. I think it's in the best interest of the township to make our right of way clear of any parking, of any trailers. So if anything does happen later, you know, at least we addressed our, addressed our area. Um, that leads me to the second ordinance is the speed limit. Uh, obviously with the trailers uh, removed permanently on our right of way. It's going to make that road uh, too easily to uh, go a little bit too fast. Uh, with the trailers, it did keep the speed down of the cars, uh, but surprisingly, even when we we're out there in the meeting, there was a car you could tell was going above the 25 mile an hour you know, speed limit if, if it was uh, signed and posted. So um, 
my concern is making it a speedway and posting it at 25 and we can uh, periodically put an officer out there and monitor the traffic and, and enforce that speed limit uh, because there might be some, uh, you know, unintended consequences by removing those trailers and increasing the opportunity for people going faster than, than they should be on our right of way. So that, uh, that concludes the uh, two items about Enterprise Drive. Before I go on, I'll you know, open it up for any questions or in, in any further explanation. No? Okay, I'll go to the next item. Um, next item is the 1033 program, which is also on the agenda. Uh, you know, uh, we initially passed the one resolution. I got feedback from the state police. They advised that the, the um, scrutiny of these programs is, you know, is in, in becoming intense. And I didn't realize that we were supposed to, or I was supposed to advise you to indicate how many items, how many maximum items we could get out of each category. So rather than you know go through and do a blanket statement of the three sheets that we talked about and I highlight it, what I did is I removed the items that I told you that I was interested in and I put a maximum number of items uh, that we could acquire for each category. So it's even, you know, it's a smaller uh, number of categories than we initially put and also specific amount of items. Uh, the uh, reasoning for the numbers that I picked was one, if the item was something that we could put in the back of each patrol car, we have six marked patrol cars. So that's why you see six for some items. Other items, uh, which could be assigned to an individual, I uh, use the maximum number of officers. And then the second one, if it was an item that which could be held by the department uh, to be retrieved by officers from the station. I put a maximum two, uh, just so there was always uh, one backup. If if one for some reason needed maintenance or was out of service, so that's the uh, that was the reasoning behind the, the number of units for each category. Uh, second, uh, before I move on, any questions on that? No. Okay. Second is the. Uh, employee assistant program. I uh, failed to mention this in December, like I usually do, but uh, it was, came uh, up due. Uh, we're in a new uh, year starting January 1st. I received the invoice today. I spoke with the representative and they said there, you know, mid year last year, there was a 5% increase, but because we signed our agreement in the beginning of the year, uh, we were not affected by that increase. They left us at the $2,500. Uh, this year for 2021, um, if you want to uh, continue the program, it was increased to $2,624. Um, I, I say 24 because I think 25 is a significant number, if I'm not mistaken, Richard. Um, isn't it? I don't about? think. It, yeah, well, that's that 15% 15 of 17,500. Okay. So, so uh, the. So that's where they agreed to, to go. Um, and, and they provided me with the usage report. The program was used once again. Um, it was used uh, by, uh, looks like my one employee. And there was four hours, nearly five hours of services provided. So uh, take that in consideration for your approval of this program. Uh, my recommendation is we continue it uh, you know, we, we can supplement it, use some money uh, from the uh, Jeff funds. I think it's a well, well spent, especially with this past year. Um, so uh, that's uh, uh, in Rivers Edge parking. Um, talk to the management there. The con main construction is done, and we're phasing into enforcing. Uh, but with this weather, though, uh, I don't know there's going to be much. Enforcing because you can't even see the yellow lines, but we are uh, public works this week. We'll be taking down those uh, parking signs that were on Burlington Avenue. There's no par parking signs here at the corner, and replacing them with no parking at any time. They're actually going to plan on doing it today, but obviously uh, the weather came up, and so that got pushed to the back, uh, you know, reasonably. So there are the items that I have to cover. 
you have any questions, just let me know. Uh, Chief, on the EAP program, do you want to, uh, are you asking for approval for that tonight or is, do we have time for any other consideration? Uh, I'm asking for approval for tonight, but obviously if, um, if you need more time, uh, I'd rather you uh, take, the, take more time to think about it, to uh, approve it than if your you know, uh, initial reaction is not to improve it. So if you need time before you go ahead and commit, um, I told the representative I would see if I can get a verbal commitment uh, you know, with, the, um, with the increase. Um, you know, like I said, they did acknowledge that it went up in April of 20 because we signed our uh, agreement. So that's, that's my only other concern is, you know, if it goes back up again this year, you know, the earlier we get the agreement signed, the earlier we get locked in. So, um, there's any concern, it could be part of the discussion at the budget workshop, uh, at the end of February, usually have 30 days to pay anyhow. But if they need to know whether we're going to pay it at the March 1st meeting, you know, in the March 1st uh, voucher list, which is probably when it would get paid, we could do that. But if everybody is uh, supportive of it, we could verbally set, tell them yes and, and process it for next week. Does any, any, uh, anyone on the committee have any questions or uh, what's your feeling? Do you want, uh, as Richard suggests, uh, we get a little time to sleep on it and-, uh, and uh, Why would we wait? Can somebody give me a reason why we wouldn't approve it tonight? Just asking if you want more time to think to think about it. That's all. I think EAP programs are are, are, are really good, and whether you, one year you get one person using it or ten people, uh, I think it's it's it, they're good programs. So, so do we need a motion? Uh, is this a resolution, Doug, or? I think all you need is is if nobody has any objections, we'll put it on the bill. Okay. List. I have no objections. All right. If there's an objection, we should discuss it at the budget period. Budget uh, works out. No objection. John? No. Chris? No. All right. Okay. You're and then, all right. We'll talk to Aaron about uh, how much of that can be covered by uh, GIF money, versus, right. which is we paid 100% of it last year out of GIF money, but that was because it was a pilot trial and or how much we would charge the various departments. Yeah, we'll work on that. Just to add on to the, the chief's comments, uh, he invited me or offered me the opportunity to, to attend the meeting uh, last week on Enterprise Drive with the uh, reps from Stanker and Galetto, uh, Misfits, RLS and NBR. Uh, very, got a lot of, uh, uh, they're talking to each other. Uh, we all know each other. And so I think uh, things will be resolved and not, uh, not fester out there. I did bring up um, the pedestrian traffic uh, between the Riverline Station and uh, mainly Misfits, but other businesses that are employees that are transiting on, on Cooperstown Road. Uh, uh, I believe the Misfit uh, manager, uh, Misfits Markets manager brought it up uh, inquiring about the sidewalks. Uh, I said, that's a long-term issue. Uh, it's a county road. Um, sidewalks are not a high priority on the county at this time, uh, but uh, we've got uh, probably about 500 feet of additional sidewalk that's been put in uh, on the Winsinger AC power uh, tract and uh, to come uh, coming with the Dolan uh, parcel when that gets developed and put in. So there is uh, improvement. Uh, there's some issues. Uh, farther down the road that we're all familiar with as far as properties and so, you know, different topography that we got to deal with. Uh, so it's not going to be a quick fix. Uh, the other thing I did bring up with them is that uh, the pedestrians, uh, their employees at transiting to and from, uh, one uh, coming through the DR Horton uh, project uh, passed on that we have received some complaints from DR Horton and the, the new residents of that development. Um, I asked them that uh, whatever mechanism they have to pass on to their employees uh, to be respectful of the uh, property and, and the, uh, that development and uh, transiting uh, on the sidewalks through that new development. And also I pointed out there seems to be an awful lot of trash uh, along, scattered along the road there. We have uh, 
a public works employee that spends about a day and a half picking up trash along that uh, half mile section, three quarters of a mile section on Cooperstown Road that leads uh, literally directly to the, the, the feet uh, as we were standing there at the entrance to uh, the uh, Stanker and Galetto uh, development. So uh, hopefully um, maybe some, uh, uh, some impact will, will come from that. Uh, but uh, anyway, that word was, uh, was put out to them. So um, we're always looking for improvement. So anyway, thank you, Chief. Uh, Mrs. Lohr, administration. Uh, just that um, with the uh, weather conditions pending, I'd like to just briefly discuss uh, tomorrow for the uh, municipal building. Uh, it's supposed to actually, I looked at the weather forecast, it's supposed to keep snowing until 10 o'clock tomorrow night. Um, before the meeting started, Harry mentioned about the contractor. He's going to reach out to the contractor. We also had bid, um, bid opening scheduled for tomorrow just for the UCC flyer, fire plumbing and electrical. So if we're not going to open, um, I just have a few things I need to do and um, people to contact a couple things to post on the website. Um, so I would like to just uh, get the feeling um, from the chief. I know John's out on the plows, I imagine that they're gonna be plowing throughout um, most of the night, if not, in, and even into tomorrow. This is not, this started um, Sunday afternoon and it's not gonna stop until tomorrow night. And it's very wet and slippery, icy on top yeah. of all the snow. But because we have a contractor that was due in to start tomorrow and also some bid openings, um, I'd like to just get an idea so that when we adjourn this meeting, I can, um, you know, Harry knows whether to, to, you know, definitely contact the contractor, say, you know, start Wednesday. And also uh, for this bid opening, I can post um, the required language on the website. We can announce it and post that language under the administrative code uh, 5 colon 34 9.3 B, postponing the bid opening. Well, I had spoken to Mr. Fenimore uh, about an hour and a half ago, and he was going to see how. Uh, his crew was and, uh, and their fatigue, they, as, you, as you noted, they've been out most of the day, uh, and, uh, but the snow has started to lay down, the, uh, the snow letting up in the, one of the forecasts uh, from the earlier today uh, didn't really happen, and so it seems to be accumulating uh, faster. Um, Mr. Fenimore was going to make the decision whether to go out again uh, later tonight, around midnight, and uh, try to get through town or give his crews a good rest and hit it uh, around dawn tomorrow morning. Uh, and that way they're, they're well rested and uh, got, got uh, daylight in their favor uh, as this is gonna continue overnight. So um, so I don't know what's, uh, what his decision was, but that's, that's those are his choices that yeah. he's working with. I think either case, he's not gonna have people uh, who can clear the municipal building lot and sidewalks for safety and that's generally been the reason why we've closed the building we don't want to have anything happen to someone who's come to the building either our employees or the public well i would suggest that we close the municipal building tomorrow so janice can make the necessary phone calls and emails that she has to make all in agreement agreed i agree right. Chief, um, can you make sure that that manual lock stays on? It's still, yes, it, it's on and it'll stay on. All right, thank you. And Harry, and Harry, you'll reach out to the contractor and let him know that, that um, you know, the building will be closed tomorrow. Absolutely. Thank you, Harry. All right. Uh, let's see, professionals. Uh, who wants to go first? Mr. Heinold? Sure. How are you? Good evening. Um, <clears throat> Just a couple of things for public. We have obviously a number of th things to discuss in executive and that are on the agenda later, so I won't get into those now. But for the benefit of the public, we did receive an application for phase 2B of the Stanker and Galetto redevelopment project, uh, which is a second phase uh, associated with misfits. Um, I have forwarded that information to Joe Rahman, our tax assessor slash pilot uh, aficionado. 
And he's been extremely helpful in reviewing that and analyzing what that means in terms of pilot calculations. Uh, I just received that back from him uh, and shared that with uh, the Stanker and Galetto people and they, have, they are in agreement. So I'm gonna be circulating uh, between now and the March meeting th that information in case there's any questions. And if you're all agreeable, we can put it on for the March 1st agenda. Um, we have also gotten some updated information from our tax collector relative to the 100 units uh, at a Abundant Life slash Living Springs. Um, I've also asked Joe to review that. He's in agreement. I've transmitted that over to the Living Spring team, and I hope to have that issue resolved for the March agenda as well. I can give you a little bit more of an update on the numbers associated with those in executive session, just so you can think about them between now and next month. And and Mary, the only other thing I wanted to note is I know uh, we have on our executive session tonight uh, the correspondence associated with 215 Ash Street. I also see uh, an icon on my Brady Bunch screen here of Mary Mannion, who I actually know through uh, volunteering um, with Relay for Life many years ago. And uh, so I just wanted to let them know that we are discussing that letter in executive session tonight. They're free to uh, stay on and they're free to uh, comment during public comment if they have any public comment, but I don't want them to leave disappointed that we didn't acknowledge their letter tonight. We, we do have it, but we have to discuss it in executive session, which means that um, the meeting will be co closed to the public because it involves uh, potential property acquisition. And that's one of the exceptions to the Open Public Meeting Act. And that's all I have right, right. now. Right. Thank you, Mr. Heinold. And uh, thank you thank for you. addressing that last issue. It, uh, you handled that quite well. So thank you. Uh, Mr. Fox. Okay. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, I'll just go over the highlights uh, of my report. Um, uh, uh, Dolan, uh, their plans have been finally approved um, and, and they have started work out there uh, on the drainage. They're installing a storm pipe and, and some head walls. Um, they're moving kind of slow, but you know, that's, that's their, 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 their issue. Um, we mentioned um, on, the, on, well, they're on tonight's ordinance for the capital improvements uh, for the 2021 road program. Uh, we, we have completed the survey work on both of those projects and we're, we're starting on a design so we can get out quickly on, on, on these. Um, the plans do have to go to DOT first for their approval before we can award the bid. Um, so we're, we're going to get the DOT plans done first and get them over um, while we're working on the, the local roads. Um, the uh, 2017, we also discussed that uh, uh, a little bit. Um, Richard brought that up, the change order. Um, uh, Thor Construction installed the parking over at um, Memorial Avenue. Uh, we do have about $1,600 left, which we're going to try and get um, some infield mix um, to use up as much of that money as we, as we can, so we don't leave any money on the table from the county. Um, the uh, Zubrug Seawall um, the Zubrug Mansion Seawall. I, I submitted a conceptual plan to uh, DEP, um, to the Assistant Commissioner. Uh, he was actually liked the plan. He was discussing it with his staff and is going to get back to me on, on our next step. Um, so, so that's a pretty positive thing. I, I, you know, I believe but we'll see when he gets back to me. I can talk to his staff. Um, the Town Hall COVID. As you mentioned, the contract was supposed to start tomorrow, the, uh, the pass-through window, um, but obviously he's not going to do that. So I'll, I'll call him and, and we'll, I assume we'll start Wednesday, but I'm not sure what his schedule is. So I'll, I'll let you know as soon as I know something on that. Uh, and last, um, 200 Ash Street. Um, we, we, I, we have um, one of our partners who's an LSRP, uh, Mark Slover, um, attending here. And uh, he, he's the one that did the report for the environmental work. Uh, so I, I know you have that report on your agenda. 
And I guess if anyone's had any questions or you want Mark to go over it, um, yeah, he's here, so feel free. Mark, you want to introduce yourself? Uh, yes, Harry, uh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, Mark Slover, and I'm a licensed site remediation professional. Uh, we completed the uh, remedial investigation for the two areas uh, at the Ash Street site. I wanted to get an idea of what direction that the township wants to head as far as remediation, whether we want to uh, try, or whether you want to uh, see if I can get the EP approval for uh, two limited estimations of hot spots, or if you want to uh, go with engineering and institutional control. Um, sorry about that. The, the advantage of the engineering and institutional controls would be less upfront money, but then there would be fees every year, uh, basically till the end of time. Um, for um, DEP fees plus biannual certifications. And the, if we can, with their approval, we, we, the excavation method would get us a, a response action outcome with no restrictions if they approve our limited excavation. excavation. So the initial cost would be about $30,000 for that. So. Before I contacted the P, I wanted to uh, see which way the the town would like to go. So your estimate for of 30k is uh, basically to make it safe and no no subsequent permit fees or follow up to that. Is that correct? Is that how I'm reading this? Well, yes. I mean, both methods will make the site safe. Um, but the, the 30,000, there would be no follow-up fees. But I have a question, Mark. Construction. Yes. Does the, can the remediation take place with the building still there or would it be better if the, if we decide to demolish the building, that it be done at that time? Well, I mean, you can certainly wait until you're doing the site work and that would, however, you're, whether you're going to demolish the building or keep it, there is no rush on this. Okay. Um, and the building does not need to be demolished to remove the soil. That's okay. Important. Thank you. Any other questions? Yeah, no. we will have to bring another fill if the uh, building comes down because there was a basement. So to, to excavate and refill and then have to refill upon demolition seems like double work. Right. That's a lot of bags of topsoil at Home Depot. <laughs> yeah, it, it probably would be easier for the contractor if the building came down to wait. Okay. Yeah. But these are two different locations. Yeah. These are two we're, not, we're not talking about doing any Soil removal where the building is. The soil removal is elsewhere on the site. Correct, behind the building. But would, the the building. Soil, would the soil have to be tested where the building outline is now? Once the building's removed and there's a basement opening there, do we have to drill and bore there? No, no. There's no reason to believe there's historic fill there. In fact, okay. I'm pretty certain there's not. Yeah, historic fill is basically trash that accumulated. On the site that is buried in the site at this point in time, not it was after the building was built, obviously. Well, it's actually built, it's what they put behind the um, basically the along the creek, uh, they put it behind the bulkhead, yeah, because uh, okay. for the bulkhead, yeah. it was basically a tidal flat, a tidal marsh there, so they filled that area, but that only went a few feet from where the bulkhead is now. Um, let's see, I can tell you how, what we estimated based on our borings. Okay. Yeah, so, I mean, one, one advantage, just so you guys can think about it, if there's a money appropriated now, now in capital, even though the capital continues, if you spend that money against capital now, you've spent it now, and it's not something to worry future generations to worry about. Mark's pointing out the alternative is, 
that there's got to be annual reviews, annual permits. It's a forever kind of thing. And that would come out of operating monies. So what's in that $30,000? Is that the disposal cost mostly? Because yes. the, yes, the, the quantity the isn't much. Cost. What's that? The excavation and disposal cost, yes. Okay. I think it covers each other. Against. Against. It's excavating and disposal. What percentage of that is for the excavation? What percentage is that for the disposal of the 30,000? Uh, Approximately. Um, probably about That's hauling 50% too. on the disposal, 40% on the excavation. All right. And back yeah. going. You have to bring clean. Yeah, you're backfilling, you're hauling. Right. And you've got to bring clean fill in the backfill. But of course, that you may be able to cut those costs down uh, if it's done during the site work on the uh, backfilling costs because there's going to be moving the soil around anyway. Is there any state funding to assist with that? Uh, the hazardous discharge site uh, fund that uh, could be directed to that? Does this location uh, fit, uh, qualify for that? Um, I could, ha I would have to look into that. That That is an, an option. I mean, it, it takes a while to get those funds. So if this isn't something you're doing in the next year, it certainly is something that you could apply for. Where would the urgency come from? Is that if we've got a plan for this and we're ready to move forward, either demoing or rehabilitating the building, is that when we need to make our decision how we're going to remediate? Good. That's when it would make the most sense to remediate. So if you're not doing that this year or anytime, anytime soon, then we could certainly look at some funding options. There might be a partial reimbursement depending on this, how you're going to use the site. All right, can you look at some of that? Or, or maybe or I guess remedial fund available if, there's, if you're going to develop it as a park and as a community center, but I'm not sure on that. All right, all right. I'll, I'll I'll dig into that and see if and uh, talk to some people and see if uh, that's something that can help alleviate some of the cost for this um, going forward. All right. Any other questions from Mr. Solover? Mayor, just just a note too, uh, and I, I'm sure Mark may be aware of this, but we did negotiate the price of the contract and have I think some excess funds available because of the environmental condition that was discovered. So it sounds to me like even worst case scenario where we protected ourselves sufficiently and we're ahead of the game. But I would agree that if there's no urgency, it's worthwhile pursuing these uh, funding opportunities and see if we can um, avail ourselves of that as well. Okay. All right, thank you. Do you have anything else to add, Mr. Sullivan or, or uh, Mr. Uh, Fox? After this discussion, I will now, since it does seem you want to go for the uh, excavating disposal method, I will um, talk to DP and see if they can agree with the way we calculated that amount because we did use a, a compliance averaging option that they need to approve. So I'll have the initial discussions with them, just a consultation. Okay. And I'll try to do that within the next month. All right. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thanks for joining the meeting tonight. All right. Anything else, Harry? That's all I have, Mayor. All right. Uh, I actually had a question for you, but uh, I might double back as we get as we go on. Um, if I can think of it. Anyway, sure. any other questions for Mr. Fox from the committee? All right, uh, I think I gotta read it. Uh, Township Committee. Uh, this is our first meeting of the month, but uh, we normally uh, have the committee comments at the second meeting, but we're, we're doing our budget uh, workshop during the second meeting. So does anybody have anything uh, that's timely and needs to uh, get out to, uh, to report on? Uh, Kate? Yes. Do you have anything? Um well, first, I'd like two thank yous to be put on the record. And one was from uh, Joe Chashko from Farmers Insurance. He wanted to thank the township 
uh, and also the residents of Delanco because they collected 900 suits for the project, Suits for Soldiers. And um, I received a thank you from Larry and Elaine Vogelman. If you recall, they lost their home at Nine Wilson Way. Um, we set up a gift card uh, donation for them through the township and also the women's club. And they sent, uh, thank you, I just had it this week, to the wonderful Delanco friends who have helped us during this very difficult and traumatic time in our life. Thank you, as words cannot express how grateful and appreciative we are with your very generous gift cards and your kindness. God bless you, Elaine and Larry Vogelman. Um, do you want me to give my full report on everything else? Because I attended quite a few meetings <laughs> since our last meeting. Uh, Sewer Authority, um, they had their reorg, presidents Tom Finan, vice presidents Phil Jenkins, and the OEM liaison is Mansur Sear. Uh, we discussed the engineering services for the collection system improvements, which they have applied to um, the New Jersey Environmental Infrastructure um, Fund and also New Jersey DEP in order to facilitate the work on that. Uh, the history board met and we're continuing to work on several projects. The also had a reorg. Uh, John Pei is the president. Marilyn Entman is the vice president. Peter Fritz is the secretary and Carolyn Seuss is the treasurer. I did receive another email from Joe Brickley regarding the Burlington Avenue uh, project that notice to proceed is going to be given to the contractor this week and that uh, one of his associates will forward a schedule when it's available and approved. Uh, so it looks like that property will be demolished. Um, recreation met and they had a reorg. Phil McFadden is the chairman. Stephen Jazz is the vice chair. Carol Hildebrand, the secretary, and Maureen Hildebrand, the treasurer. We went over all the projects and activities for the upcoming year with the hopes that we'll be able to, um, to actually hold some of these um, activities uh, and they approve the budget in the Field of Dreams contract. Uh, dye kits will be given out to the families for Easter to dye Easter eggs. Um, they register online and we will disperse them like we did the gingerbread houses by drive-by pickup. Uh, we got that idea from the uh, clinic, Janice. That worked out well. Um, Richard already talked about the Field of Dreams meeting um, and the fence ordinance. I did propose an amendment to the fence ordinance that's on the agenda tonight. And uh, 200 ash, um, I did get some information uh, regarding the boathouse, but I haven't heard from any Camden County officials. I just did a look up on uh, Google and got a nice article about how that was uh, renovated, but uh, I haven't heard from any of the, the commissioners from Camden County yet. And I hope to have that next week or at our next meeting. And um, that's it. Thank you. Um, Harry, I'm gonna jump back to you real quick. I did remember what I, um, I was looking at the, uh, the site plans for um, Dolan, for Dolan's project. and. Mm -hmm. I know Mr. Schwab and you have been talking about the basin behind the municipal building was going to get fixed and connect it with a basin over on the Dolan property. Is that a correct it, understanding? Well, it's, there's going to be a pipe that's going to be installed from our, our basin to an inlet on their, their driveway. Okay. So can get right into a storm inlet. All right. Uh, I'm not a PE, but I couldn't find any pipe or connection or anything going to anything on the Dolan property from their basin. And it looks like part of their fencing for the property actually encroaches on the, uh, the north side, the far side of that basin, uh, our existing basin. So I don't know if they're going to restructure that or reshape it to, to, to fit. Anyway, just point that out. Like I said, I'm, I'm the amateur in that department. Okay. I'll All right. Thank you. Uh, let's see, continuing on with the committee, uh, Mr. Brown. Uh, just uh, Shake Tree met last week, and uh, there too, we have a new chair, uh, Dr. John Paillet, and 
uh, the vice chairs, Bill Matlevich, and uh, it was a very good meeting. We did our first Zoom uh, meeting and it worked out very well. Uh, it was fully attended by all the, all the members and uh, there was quite a, quite a, quite a few uh, requests considering it's been winter. Uh, so a lot of business was taken care of and uh, we're ready for the new year. Thank you. That's all I have. Thank you, John. Uh, Ms. Holland. Hi, uh, nothing uh, terribly timely. I also attended the Field of Dreams meeting and uh, nothing to add on that. But um, uh, the library is actually holding its first River Run for Reading virtual run April 4th to April 10th. It's a fundraiser, but also um, going to be a really great event. All the um, registrants get um, a custom made uh, face shield, which is pretty neat and it's affordable, $15 per. Um, so hopefully we get a lot of interest in that and can help with uh, funding programming moving forward. Um, I, I spoke to John briefly after the Field of Dreams meeting um, about the Clean Communities Grant. So I just need to follow up with him, get the contact he had from the county um, and work with Amber I reach out to Amber. I've been remiss not contacting her. Um, other than that, just uh, looking forward to ongoing fence regulation discussion. So uh, that's that's all I have. All right. You can't wait, huh? Uh, Mr. Allette. Uh, the only thing I'd like to share uh, with the folks t uh, this evening is uh, through CERT, I helped out on Saturday over at the uh, County Emergency Building and uh, there was a food pantry uh, where we gave out approximately 215 uh, packages of food, uh, fresh vegetables, chicken, uh, milk, and uh, a pantry box. Uh, we'll have our next uh, drive-through uh, pantry uh, available on February the 20th over at the, uh, again, the emergency building uh, over in West Hampton. Uh, there's no uh, special requirements. If folks need food. Uh, they just come in, uh, give their name, and there are no other questions asked. Uh, so if there are folks at, in town that uh, may be in that type of situation, uh, again, uh, it, it's a, a good opportunity to be able to uh, get food at no cost and uh, no questions asked. So uh, so if you know anyone that's in need, again, February the 20th, at, uh, it's from 10 a.m. to noon. That's all I have. Very, very good. And uh, there's a lot of information on the uh, township's website under community uh, COVID-19, and there's a, a subcategory on things you can do um, donations, Food Bank of South Jersey, uh, all kinds of things, that, uh, opportunities out there. So uh, uh, to help out, uh, uh, we're going to be in this for some time, uh, hopefully getting better as time goes on. But uh, there's, there's a, lot of a lot of good lists there, a lot of points of contact to uh, uh, lend uh, some assistance, whether it's uh, uh, muscles or, or monetary donations. So anyway, thanks for the, the good work there. All right, consent agenda items. Uh, consent agenda items are considered to be routine, will be enacted in a single motion. Any item requiring discussion will be removed from the consent agenda. All consent agenda items will be reflected in full in the minutes. Uh, do we have any items on the consent agenda that any uh, committee member would like to uh, pull out, uh, discuss separately or treated separately? No questions, here we go. Uh, ordinance 2021-02, uh, calendar year 2021 model ordinance to exceed municipal budget appropriation limits and establish a cap bank NJSA 40A colon 40-45.14. First reading by title only set public hearing date for March 1st, 2021. Uh, ordinance uh, 03, amending chapter 295-32 governing vehicles and parking. First reading by title only and set public hearing date for March 1st, 2021 at 7 p.m. And make sure that parking thing is for the full 848 feet. Yeah. 
that that uh, the chief mentioned at the beginning. All right. Ordinance uh, 04, amending chapter 295-48, uh, governing speed limits. First reading by title only in set public hearing date for March 1st, uh, 2021 at seven. Uh, resolution 2021-34, resolution authorizing Burlington County Division of Mosquito Control to conduct aerial larval and adult mosquito control activities and authorizing execution of a municipal agreement form. Uh, resolution-35, uh, disposal of out of service office equipment. Resolution-36, award a bid and contract for turf FOD turf maintenance. Resolution-37, resolution authorizing the Township of Delanco through the, through the Township of Delanco Police Department to participate in the Defense Logistics Agency Law Enforcement Support Office 1033 program to enable the Township of Delanco Police Department to request and acquire excess Department of Defense equipment. Resolution-38, refund of overpayment, the dog license. Resolution-39, authorizing change order number three to the West Avenue and Babe Ruth ball field improvement project. Resolution-40, authorizing self-certification for 2021 rental inspection program due to COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, payment of bills, account to current fund, uh, $1,126,817.85, excuse me, payroll. $144,347.38, capital fund $17,738 even, escrow trust $14,746.50, municipal open space $6,590.92. Uh, approval of minutes, um, November 16th, 2020, December 21st, 2020, and January 4th, 2021. Approval of department reports, approval of consent agenda. Motion, please. So moved. Second. By Ms. Fitzpatrick, second by Ms. Holland. Roll call, please. Mr. Brown. Yes. Mrs. Patrick. Yes. Ms. Holland. Yes. Mr. Arlette. Yes. Mr. Templeton. Yes, thank you. Meeting is now open to the public for comments and questions. Session two, please state your name and your address. And, uh, for your comments and questions. And again, everyone is reminded that if you're um, making a comment or question, please unmute yourself or you have the chat function available to you. Hearing no comments and seeing no questions, this uh, se second session, comment question session is now closed to the public. Correspondence, Mrs. Lohr. Yes, there's one piece of correspondence that was received, and it is a um, letter from John uh, Paye, 101 W Lane, um, expressing his thoughts uh, and support for saving the uh, building at 200 Ash Street. And that is all the correspondence that I have, Mayor. All right, thank you. Uh, status coronavirus disease, COVID-19. Community impacts uh, update. Um, as you know, with the vaccine rollout, it uh, hasn't gone the smoothest in the state, uh, actually in a couple states. Uh, it's quite confusing. Uh, I was on a conference call last week, the week before with uh, the county health, and then the next day with uh, the governor's staff. And uh, I expressed uh, some disappointment in questioning why there seem to be seven, eight, nine, ten different scheduling systems for uh, for the vaccine. Uh, when back in December, the state uh, Department of Health initially had that registry, so uh, never really got a, a good, clear answer on any of that. But uh, uh, the most overriding issue, obviously, that we've all been hearing about is the lack of supply. So hopefully that'll, that'll start opening up um, and uh, the difficulties in scheduling and appointments. And uh, uh, a neighbor was telling me that uh, they had found uh, their nearest, uh, closest appointment was in July uh, that they were able to get. So um, something we're just, just gonna have to bear with and, uh, and try to help each other out and find get good information. We try to keep uh, uh, Mrs. Russell and uh, his husband on the township administrator 
administration have been keeping the uh, website up to date that has the, the best information right now that we have from the state uh, as far as the various locations, um, both for testing and for the vaccines. So um, that's a good place to start, but uh, it's really kind of on your own to, to really try to find uh, where you can get a vaccine and, 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 and keep it, uh, keep at it. Don't, uh, don't plug in your name and address and phone number in one and, and uh, think that uh, uh, that's going to be it. Keep, uh, keep pecking away at it. So um, executive orders update. Do you have anything, Mrs. Lohr or uh, the chief? For I don't order? have anything on executive orders, no. And uh, as far as I can tell, we're indefinitely going to be doing this. Uh, be doing it for, uh, so any questions or comments on the, this topic? All right, discussion item, status of 200 Ash Street, Canvas Shop. Uh, we've Call mom. With uh, Mr. Fox's and Mr. Soliver's uh, report on the remediation and the phase two uh, results. Uh, any questions or comments, or I guess going forward, uh, we hope sometime in March, maybe have a, a, a little more of a dedicated discussion with the public input uh, on uh, the future of that property and that building. So uh, does anyone have anything to add on that at this point? No. 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 Difficult decision. It's. Uh, it's something we want to be methodical and uh, hopefully make a decision and not uh, have any regrets about it. So, uh, second item review of Burlington County Route 130 Municipal uh, Questionnaire Draft. Uh, I think Mr. Schwab or Mrs. Lohr circulated uh, uh, that last week. Um, that was, uh, this is a uh, came down from a uh, uh, the State Office of Planning Advocacy and through the County uh, Bridge Commission, uh, Mr. Uh, Stenny Kynes, uh, I think that's for pronunciation. Anyways, the questionnaire, they gave us kind of a short notice uh, uh, timeline to complete it uh, about a week or so and uh, not wanting to give a send back something that was incomplete or uh, um, not what we wanted to say, uh, ask for a delay. And so we're getting to the end of that uh, 45 day extension that I had uh, requested. So um, I think that was circulated. If anyone uh, has any objections or additions, uh, uh, something that uh, was omitted, uh, pretty much all of it uh, or a good part of it was extracted from uh, uh, our uh, planning documents, either the, uh, the master plan uh, the master uh, re-examination plan that was done last uh, earlier last year or the affordable um, uh, or affordable housing compliance uh, reports. So most of that was uh, cut and paste out of those documents to uh, answer the questions. Uh, I, I had a, I had a, a memo on the last time when we reviewed this that we approved it on December 20th. What? So it, did it change from then? Because I had already had on my copy, okay. I think there were still, there were some additions that came in from uh, uh, some folks in the, in the township administration and some other committee members. And so they, they were incorporated and uh, okay. we went back and, and uh, pulled out uh, uh, text out of the, uh, those planning documents that seem to fit uh, uh, the blank spots that were still in, in that questionnaire. So um, yes, it, it was revised, uh, hopefully improved after that. Yes, Kate. Thank you. Yeah, the, the main reason I suggested that uh, you all look at it before it goes out, the last section, pages seven and eight state requests is as post information is bringing up issues that uh, Delanco would like the state to look at. And uh, Mike listed a number of items and the, whether or not everyone is in agreement 
with that. That's not fact. That's opinion. That's the opinion portion, if I can say so, right, Mike? And I, I, so, I did want my hand and all over that, or my fingerprints. To, I, I wanted it circulated and, and wanted as many uh, other fingerprints on it. Uh, that's how things are supposed to work. Uh, I have a question then. Is there, would this be the document that we would request from the state, the, um, the traffic impact on Delanco with the businesses that we have, the additional businesses and the jug handle at um, that enters in Delanco at uh, Bridgeboro and Creek Road. Would this be the would this be the place to notice that, Richard? I don't think this is the doc, this document may have some piece of it talking about traffic issues in general, but I don't think specifically just one one more piece of paper they have. Yeah. As, as I understand it, this this is a, like a preliminary uh, executive summary, if you will, as, as Mr. Schwab described it. Uh, we uh, a lot of stuff uh, uh, two years ago or a year and a half ago was sent up was, was compiled by uh, Mrs. Lohr and, and uh, uh, Mrs. Russell and sent up to the uh, the state um, and uh, voluminous and basically these questions seem to be geared around summarizing what was in those 20 or 30 documents into something that's four pages. Um, but this, this process to review or uh, update the, uh, the Route 130 corridor plan is, it looks like, as, as I understand it from talking with Mr. Stan Kindness down at the Bridge Commission, is gonna be about a year and a half or two year process. And uh, it will involve of the planning board, it will involve a, a public, uh, uh, an ad hoc committee uh, of members of different entities in town and the public and so forth. So this this is really a very preliminary step in, in a long drawn out process, as I understand. Yeah, there's mul multiple meetings that you'll be mm -hmm. attending with all the other municipalities on yes. this. Yes. And as always, it's linked to, you know, if you, if you do all these things and check all these boxes and attend all the meetings, then apparently you get some points when you apply for grants and seek funding for, so it's, it's the carrot and stick type uh, approach for, for going through this, this process. Uh, all right, so we're on agreement and I'll, I'll send that on to uh, Mr. Stanley Karnas at the Bridge Commission tomorrow. Uh, proposed amending ordinance for fence regulations, amending the township code chapter 110-13 governing fences and walls to allow certain non-conforming fences to be replaced. I believe Ms. Holland and uh, Ms. Fitzpatrick were detailed to uh, solve this. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I haven't solved it, but I came up with a, a recommendation to actually um, deal with the issue at hand at 327 Vine Street. Uh, Doug put it in better legal terms, um, but, but I had recommended that a fence be allowed at the end of the driveway, six feet high to replace an existing fence. And what Doug had indicated in the ordinance, maybe Doug, you wanna take it for the legal uh, your wording was um, actually as long as it wasn't on the front property line, but do you want to go over that? Because I think we need to deal with this residence issue and it uh, from here, it needs to go to the joint land use board. And I think this is a fair way of dealing with some property owners that already have six foot fences, but they don't meet their front property line. So Doug, I would ask you to, to, uh, Talk about that. Sure. So uh, I'm sure everybody on committee remembers all this, but if anybody else is listening in, the issue is is that there's a resident who has <clears throat> raised raised concern because they have an existing fence that runs um, from the side of their house to the side yard and then back. But under our technical terms of our ordinance, it can only be six feet from the rear property line 
and everything in the backyard, including the side yards in the backyard can be six feet, but anything forward of the rear of the house has to be uh, four feet or less under the code. So they can't replace in kind going straight to fence permit. Um, we have had a lot of back and forth, including involvement by the uh, Joint Land Use Board, who spent an extensive amount of time talking about potential ordinance scenarios. So I think the proposal that um, Christine and Kate came up with to sort of, you know, get from point A to point B on this, on this somewhat narrow issue to try and get the issue resolved is if somebody already has that condition, it's a pre-existing uh, condition that they be allowed to go in and replace it in kind. So this person, I think on their house, if I remember the pictures, it's not quite up to the front edge of the house. It's maybe six, 10 feet back, somewhere on the side of the house, runs parallel to the street at six feet and then runs um, along the back, along the side yard into the back of the yard. So there's a section on the front that technically isn't in compliance and there's a section up to the back property line that's or back house line that's technically not in compliance on the side yard. Uh, this would allow that to be replaced in kind if it's an existing condition. Um, and, I, and, I, and so the, the way I've written it is uh, where an existing fence up to six feet in height is forward of the rear line of the main structure. It, be, it may be maintained or replaced with a fence of up to six feet in height provided it is not forward of the front line of the main structure. This shall apply to the section of fencing running parallel from the side of the house to the side property line and the fencing run along, running along the side property line. Um, I think this is about as narrow as we can define the issue to resolve the situation. Uh, and I'm also mindful that if we, I think if we're too expansive with it, we've already heard back from the board about concerns um, about allowing it to be as far up as the front property line, a front structure line. Uh, and there was some discussion, I think Janice, it was like one third or 30% or something like that, that they had said from the, from the rear property line. Um, and we didn't, we didn't act on that because that still would not have resolved this situation. So I think, uh, you know, we've had a lot of discussion on this issue. And I, again, I think this is a fairly narrowly crafted ordinance that will resolve the issue at hand. And if we have more to talk about in terms of how we wanna do fencing going forward, I think that's all up for discussion. But in terms of just getting from point A to point B, I think this is a palatable way to get that done. I like it. Yeah, and, and I wonder, Doug, if we couldn't have this as first reading because then I believe it still has to go to the Joint Land Use Board, if I'm not mistaken. You're correct, Kate. So as we've done in the past, if the committee's on agreement and, uh, and wants to put it on for first reading, you can go ahead and move it tonight. It gets sent to the board for their review because it is an amendment to our zoning ordinance provisions. Um, and then hopefully if they could get a referral back to us uh, for the March meeting, we could have second reading in March. As uh, Kate or Chris or, or Richard or Janice, has, has our code, code enforcement officer looked at this language as far as how, how he reads it and, and interprets it, that this is going to get the result we're, we're hoping for? Not formally, no. I just... No saw this last, okay. you know, last week. I mean, it's pretty common sense wording if you ask me. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, we'll forward on to him. I don't think there'll yeah. be any problem. All right. I'm, I'm that's, just... that's basically code enforcement officers, zoning officers look for, for clarity. You can't ask right. for any more clear than this. So All right. This is pretty clear. Yeah. I would move that this be first reading tonight, uh, make a motion to do that. Um, okay. It's pretty common sense language. It, it would solve a problem for this gentleman, but also for some other residents possibly yeah, yeah, who want to replace in kind. Yeah, there's a lot in this uh, that would be captured by this. Anybody have any any uh, comments? If, yeah. if I, I just, I have one. I mean, we're talking about it being clear and um, we're all that it's going to help this resident and the people with the existing conditions. But 
where's the cutoff for where an existing fence up to six foot? Like, if I were a resident who's savvy enough, I would quick put my fence up, make it look old or whatever, and then come to the township in a couple months or a year from now and say, oh man, wow, thank God this ordinance has passed. I'd really love to enhance the value of my property. Like, and then suddenly they're grandfathered in, which is fine because I personally am for less restrictive fence regulations by our town. But um, I guess, is there anything, I, if I were reading this as the joint land use board, I would want some clarification on that exist when the existing fence had to have been put up. So I personally don't believe that it belongs in there, but I imagine that's gonna be their comment back. Well, it would have to already be there. I mean, obviously it, people can't put up a fence without a permit. So they do. it has to exist. I, I don't know. I think it's pretty self-explanatory. That's my feeling. Um, and I think um, as Doug indicated that um, I think this would pass the joint land use board because it is not right at the front property line. I think that's something that they um, are definitely not uh, in favor of. Um, and this would not be obstructive in any way. This, this fellow, it's at the end of his driveway and, and there are other fences that are at the end of driveway. So I, um, I don't know. I just think it's something we should move forward. We've been talking about this for seven or eight months now. So I think we should move forward with it. That's my opinion. The only, um, the only thought I have to address Chris's comment or concern is at the beginning where it says where an existing fence, we could say where at the time of the adoption of the, the ordinance, an existing fence. So basically, you know, once this gets adopted, we're dealing with everything that has pre-existed up to this point in time. If somebody uh, puts in a fence illegally after the adoption of this ordinance, they wouldn't get the the benefit of of the grace that we're trying to provide here. Yeah. Um, just a just a thought. I agree. All right. I think that's a good suggestion. Is sort of putting the the line in the sand from this, this date forward. All right, I'll send a, uh, that minor revision to Janice so that she has it for um, second reading then. All right. Great. We'll, we'll insert the uh, language in the first sentence there at the time of adoption. This will be in, a, in effect, something like that. Okay. Yep. I believe uh, Ms. Fitzpatrick made a motion. Is there a second for uh, first reading of this? Is that? What I'll second it. it. Christine seconded. All right. Roll call, Mayor. Yes, please. And, um, yeah, we for the four. record, for the record, so it will be ordinance 2021 5, amending the township code at chapter 11013 governing fences, fences and walls to allow certain non conforming fences to be replaced. First reading by title only and set public hearing for March 1st, 2021. My only, co um, my only caveat with that is that then the, to have a March 1st public hearing, the planning board, the land use board is going to have to do its uh, consistency review tomorrow night. And I know Kitty is here. Is Kitty still here? Kitty? Yes, she's there. She's yes, here. I'm here. Hi, Kitty. Would it be possible for the board to have this um, for consistency review to, at their meeting tomorrow evening? Well, we have a hearing to conduct. I can certainly pass it along to Lori as the chairperson and, she, you know, advise her of what is going on with the ordinance. So with that, I'll ask uh, our solicitor, Doug Heinhold, uh, for recommendation. So let's let's put it on for second reading public hearing on March 1st. The board, mm -hmm. if it needs additional time, um, we'll just carry the, the, the second reading from March 1st to March the 18th. Second. Okay. 
Okay. All right. Sounds good. All right. Uh, and, with, and with that, um, Mayor, Please. roll call. Uh, Mr. Mr. Brown. Mr. Brown. Are we hung up? He's muted. He's muted. Oh, muted. Yes. Hi. Is that a yes? <laughs> Hi. <laughs> okay. That's a yes for Mr. Brown. Right. Mr. Fitzpatrick. Yes. Ms. Holland. Yes. Mr. Ouellette. Yes. Mr. Templeton. Yes. Uh, well done. Uh, it's, uh, the wheels of government sometimes go slow, but uh, with the urgency of uh, that resident uh, who has a, a, a four-year-old with boundless energy, we need to get a fence up there. So anyway, good job. Uh, let's see, so we got that. Oh, back to Mr. Heinold, what fun. Impact of recreational cannabis le le legislation. So um, you may have heard in the news that the uh, legislature and the governor are still trying to hammer out the final version of this legislation. Um, the issue that's at hand between them really ha has nothing to do with the way it's ultimately gonna, going to roll out from a municipal standpoint, it really has to do with um, underage uh, possession and what the consequences are of that in this new world. Um, I just think we need to keep a, a finger on the pulse because at some point that passes and then we have a six month clock that starts to tick for us to respond as to how we want to manage what this means for our town. There are six use categories. The sixth is delivery, which can't be prohibited in any town, but all other, all other uses can be permitted or prohibited and zoned as the township sees fit. So I think uh, it's worth, you know, just sort of thinking about so that when the time comes, we have a, a township committee thought process that we've been, you know, mulling over a little bit and we can have a discussion about what we think uh, in terms of how that should play out in Delango. Um, I can tell you, I represent two other towns. One is actively pursuing potential uses. Um, it's a very rural town. And the other town is a very densely populated town and uh, the likelihood is it's gonna be prohibited as to all uses across the board. So I see uh, our chief of police uh, smiling. Uh, you know, I, I think we should definitely hear from him on his thoughts as, as the time comes and when it's appropriate and anybody else who has uh, some input on the issue. But um, just again, something to think about in terms of whether, uh, whether we should engage at all or whether it makes more sense for our town to simply say we're not going to permit this as a use anywhere in town. The, uh, the only other thing I want to add to that is once we make that selection, we're bound by it for five years. So we kind of set the playing field to start um, and, and then uh, it's going to be another five years before the, the governing body can revisit the issue if they feel like the you know, information has changed or the parameters have changed. All right. Um, yeah, there's a lot of information and uh, there's uh, several states that are several years ahead of us on this uh, with uh, their re results, uh, how it's impacted uh, communities, large and small. And uh, uh, we all uh, not just the committee, but the, our, our public, our friends and our neighbors in town here. Really, uh, uh, I, I think there's an opportunity here that we really need to educate ourselves on what's what's out there, what's what's happened to other towns and communities uh, where this has been uh, um, decriminalized or legalized, however you want to term it, and what those impacts are. Um, and uh, I invite everyone to... Uh, learn some things or seek the information that's out there. Uh, any other comments on that though, Mr. Heinold's uh, review? All right, uh, last item for discussion, the uh, new stormwater regulations requirement. 
Mr. Schwab and I think Mr. Fox has a has a hand in this. Yeah. Just as I mentioned, the uh, the budget session, it's a small item, but uh, the state is requiring that we adopt or, uh, their upgraded stormwater regulations. Uh, they have a sample. One methodology would be, to, it appears that it's the same format as the past one. You probably adopted the model one the last time the state put it out. Uh, and so we could simply take their model and put it in and replace that entire chapter. Or we could compare it line by line and see uh, where there might be some differences and so on. Um, uh, our engineers indicated that their firm is doing that review for a number of their other clients. And the question is, you know, how much uh, cost uh, our solicitors pointed out there is a, a deadline to that, which is probably in the next month. Uh, so the question is whether or not we want to spend how much money we want to spend on that. I can take a quick look at it. Seems to me that if it's technical, you just replace it as is, uh, but you know, to spend in the thousands to have it reviewed was not something I was comfortable with. I think uh, Harry's got the number down lower, but I still think it's a fairly minor review. I'm not that thrilled with spending much money on it at all, but uh, you know, Harry maybe can explain, Doug can explain. Yeah, it's, um, it's, it's, you have to adopt this ordinance um, or something more stringent. Um, and we are doing it for several towns, uh, large and small. Um, most of the towns are taking this sample ordinance, um, matching it up to other current ordinances. ordinances. Um, the main thing you wanna look for, Richard, is, especially if you're gonna be doing this, are the definitions. Um, the definitions are critical on what, what they mean in, in other parts of the uh, kinds of code versus this ordinance. Um, so, so that's basically, you know, what we do. We, we, we take this ordinance, we look at the, the township ordinance, make sure everything jives. Um, we should um, get the input of the planning board engineer um, to see if he has any comments on it and then it will be adopted. But um, yeah, you're, if, if you want to try and tackle that, Richard, and you know, I can just assist you however you need it, that would be fine as well. Yeah. And I'd be happy to take a, a look at it quickly and see whether or not it does seem to be any more complicated than that. And if I need uh, Harry's help, I'll pass it on to him. Richard, so can you, uh, um, I guess I can find it, but uh, can you send me whatever this, this proposed stormwater thing is, or I'll go look for it if you haven't sent it already. Anyway. No, I have it. I'll forward it. All right. And I, mm -hmm. it. I didn't think it was high enough priority to uh, get in the way of, you know, doing the budget and doing a bunch of other things. But I guess when the state sets a deadline, they don't care about anyone else's priorities. It really only affects major projects. And as Kitty pointed out, when Dolan came in, uh, she knew enough to use the new standards and the new forms that have to be adopted as part of this for them. So until there's another project that comes in, it's an ordinance that sits and doesn't have any impact, although uh, the state has a deadline. It might have an impact if we had an application all of a sudden sneak in and we haven't updated it. That's probably our biggest risk of uh, not moving quickly. That's correct. So. We'll look at it and, 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 and go from there. And if we need to spend a few hundred dollars in engineering, then I assume that'll be accepted. All right, that can, I think that concludes the discussion items. Does anybody have anything else uh, for public, uh, for discussion at this time? And uh, there's a resolution to go in executive session. Yeah, that'll be resolution 2021-41 for executive session. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Janice, am I adding anybody other than the committee members and Richard and yourself? Uh, I don't know of anyone else coming into executive mayor. Doug, yeah. 
Make sure Doug's in there. Yeah. yeah. Do, uh, do we need Harry for anything on the sewer line or is that just a financial side? Yeah, that's a financial thing. Yeah. All right. We just need a motion to, to um, delay the penalty for cat and dog. Delay the late fee for dog and cat licenses for the month of February um, so that they're uh, giving our people opportunity to, um, because of COVID right. and uh, a lot of rabies clinics that have been canceled, give people an opportunity to uh, get their uh, dog and cat license, cats uh, with their rabies shots and um, uh, another opportunity to um, get their licenses without a late fee for February. All right, motion uh, for all that uh, to not assess a late fee for dog and cat licenses for the calendar month of February. So I'll moved. I'll second. Three moved. Aye. Third. I think in all in favor. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Anything else for tonight? No, Mr. Mayor. Right. Nope. Motion to adjourn. So move. Second. Second. All in favor? <laughs> Aye. 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 Good night, everybody. Good, Good night. night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Uh, just uh, our our next budget workshop is next Monday. Um, Richard's there. I think we're gonna have we're gonna have whatever regular business we have. It should be not much right. because um, yeah, the, it's so seven it's thirty with all the other groups, not not amongst yourselves, but with the groups. I'll email to invite them all to make their case. On, on the eighth, on the eighth, correct? On the eighth, right. right. We get okay. together again on the twenty second, three thirty. Okay. okay. Monday the twenty second is the and Rob the verse will be here. We'll talk about surplus and revenues. All right and capital items but monday night we're uh, we're having a regular business meeting a regular too. business meeting from 7 to seven thirty, approximately sure very short sure. okay and then we're meeting with all the other boards and commissions starting at yeah. seven thirty, right it's part of your end of part of your meeting very good thank you okay good question john thank you hi aaron hi everybody hi. <laughs> hi. now we see your face yeah, we're i wasn't late. asleep i promise <laughs> yeah Thank you. Now with those kids. Yeah. All right. Good night. Have a good night, everybody. All right. I'll good be night, in the house. Hopefully, Wednesday, you. the weather will be over. All right. Okay. Bye bye.